Hello and welcome to another day on Cornwall Pocket Farm where I try and figure out how to live sustainably on 300 square metres in the city. We're in the garden again today. Um, I've still got to finish planting out the Italy bed, the one that's under the marquee. Um, I've got all the tomatoes and everything in there but I need to put in some onions and carrots and other bits and pieces like that. Um, I've got some other seedlings here that need to go out and be potted on. I also need to clear the, the France bed. Well, certainly some country beds within France. Um, whether I'll get onto that today, I don't know, but I desperately need to go out. It's been raining, we've had quite a bit of rain, which is quite nice actually, because it's quite warm and the plants are just, just going mad. They're going absolutely mad in the garden, which is wonderful. And the wedding day rose is out, so I've got to show you that because it's just beautiful. Anyway, let's get into the garden and uh, yeah, just follow along with what I'm doing today. The light is so lovely at the moment. It's all dark because it's going to have a thunderstorm and there's rain, but look at the wedding day rose. The bees are all over it. And then down here, we've got the Cardinal Red Clematis. And that's just a joy. I mean, so pretty. And of course, we still have the blossom, the blossom on the apple coming along and setting fruit, which is nice. And also on this side, we have blossom and fruit set. Look, look at that. Oh. I know I say exciting a lot <laughs> on this on this channel, but you know, I used to work in the corporate sector where we all went around saying how exciting it was and nobody actually believed that it was exciting at all. You just said it because everybody else said it. But honestly, when I say that's exciting, that's exciting. Those are little baby apples. How amazing. of leeks. Some of them are quite small but they're still very delicious and edible. So I've cleared that bed of the leeks. These leeks went in really late because the ones that I had in last year rotted with the weather that we had. So I put them in really late so they went in the wrong time of the year anyway. So really anything I've got from this harvest is a bonus. And of course you might be asking me what am I going to do with all these leeks now? Well of course I'm going to clean them up I'm going to chop them up and then they'll go in the freezer. I find that if I just chop them up and then lay them out on a sheet to freeze, I can put them in a box and then it's really easy just to pull out what I need uh, when we're cooking. So those will go straight into the freezer. I'll now clear this bed of weeds and get some of the chicken poo compost from my chicken coop, pop it onto there and, uh, and plant out some of my summer crops. I also decided to take out this bolted chard because it was in my way. I've left the roots in and I will probably take that out when I clear that next mini bed in the middle. But this obviously needs processing to go in the freezer as well, so I'll do both of those jobs together. I use two buckets when I'm clearing a bed. One is uh, all the weeds and things that'll go into the chicken coop and I always have this little bucket with me because this little bucket has the things that I don't want in my garden and that need to go in the bin. So if I come across a bit of plastic, a sweet wrapper, anything that um, 
has maybe blown in or, or that type of thing. It goes in this bucket to go in our uh, council rubbish bin. And this is what the majority of the material goes in, which is, of course, all the weeds and things like that that just go to the chicken coop. Okay, so I found my first piece for the small bucket. I don't know if you can see, just a little bit of red plastic. Don't know where it's come from. Plastic is everywhere in our environment now, so, you know, and of course we're in suburbia in an urban environment, so, you know, bits of plastic, they just find their way into my garden. And I think they'll find their way into any growing space, to be perfectly honest. So I just have this little bucket to put things like this in, and then they can go in my council rubbish collection. Okay, so I've weeded the garden. That's what I've got. Uh, that red plastic was actually the only thing I found in that bed, which was, uh, which was good. But this is the amount of weeds I've got, and I haven't weeded that bed since I planted it up, which would have been the, oh golly, autumn, last autumn. So it's full spring now, and the, any weeds that are popping up are popping up, so that's pretty good for that bed. It won't get weeded again until autumn again, when basically all the summer crops come out. I find that no dig and then putting compost on the top really suppresses your weeds. And after you've been doing it for a couple of years, they're, yeah, really easy to manage. My main um, weed, I don't know if I can find any, that. <laughs> it's not kakoya grass. I do have kakoya grass in here. This is mondo grass. In the suburbs, all of the low maintenance gardens around me are all planted up with this dreadful mondo grass stuff. And the reason it's a low maintenance plant is because it's practically indestructible. It also self seeds and creeps. And yeah, mondo grass. <laughs> I'm sure they don't have that in the countryside as a problem weed, but in my garden, it is one of my problem weeds. And of course, the magic ingredient, compost out of my chicken coop. I find in a small garden, I do have a big wheelbarrow. But it's so big that I find it really quite difficult to use it in my tiny space. So this here is my wheelbarrow, essentially. I'm actually thinking of getting rid of the wheelbarrow because all I use it for is to empty my potato buckets into. And I think that maybe like a little trolley or something might be better. Not sure, but at the moment the bucket works fine. The chickens love it when I dig out the compost. Let me show you. I'll just dump this and I'll show you what they're doing. What are you doing, girlies? Have you found some nice bugs? Have you? Oh, yeah. That's fun, isn't it? In fact, when I go in to do the digging... Oh, that's a good one. When I go in to do the, the digging, I have to shoo them away. As soon as I'm out, they're back again. Ooh, tasty treats! So I just do that maybe once a year, that's all it takes, and it's just literally a couple of inches of compost that I put on there before I plant in in spring, and most of the beds are like that, um, unless I'm doing something like a particular area where I'm doing carrots that don't like the things too rich, um, I will just spread some compost on like that once a year, that's all I do. I won't make it too smooth because as soon as I walk away, the blackbirds will be in there kicking it all up and, uh, and organising it for me. So essentially they're part of the team as well. Okay, I have managed to get the seedlings in. 
it's threatening to rain really really badly so I don't know if I'm gonna get more than that um, yeah you can't see much I've covered it with the cloth so basically I've put the canes in there are gigantic beans at the base sewn um, at the base of those canes and then just over here over here there's a cucumber coming up here and then all the way along here and here I've got some butternut squash planted out so I have heaps of butternut squash so I have planted them in sort of doubles and I have more indoors so if the slugs and snails um, have them I've got more to back up because that's usually what happens in this sort of wet weather where they kick off and they're right next to the wall and of course the wall is an amazing habitat for lots of wildlife some nice <laughs> and some not so nice well they're all nice but some are some are more helpful in the garden than others shall we say so that's planned it up now and i shall leave that to its own devices um i just wanted to show you my beans sorry to squish you around so these beans I don't know if you can see the, the ones here, just um, the ones coming up these canes up here. So the beans there are all coming up the canes. They are market wonder. They're a runner bean. So some of them, like this one, is quite high. It's sort of chest height on me now. Um, so they're making um, great strides. But as you can see from the holes in the leaves, there are some little critters enjoying them as well. So, um, but they are making a break for it, so that's good. And then I have some new beans in here. Don't know if you can just see here and there. Those are um, Blue Lake beans, which are a French bean. They're a climbing French bean. So they're coming up now. They were sown direct as well. So they're coming up uh, and doing well. And I did notice that I have flowers now on those peas that I sowed um, a couple of videos ago, I think it was. So look. Those are my giant monge too. Oh, I need to get some new string in there actually. So they've got something, oh, excuse the bus, another bus. Never around when you want them, but always when you don't. <laughs> so anyway, they are um, climbing well now and hopefully we'll get our monge too on there soon. I could probably take the cover off these carrots now. If you can see, I don't know if you can see through there, the carrots are really kicking off quite well. So that cover was there really just to stop the birds digging them up when they were small. And they're quite a size now, so I can probably take the cover off. Other big news, we have some quince forming on our tree. I don't know if you can see, we had lovely flowers, but just about there. And there's another one just about here. Um, we've got some quince forming, so that's very exciting. Rhubarb's doing really well at the back there. And we've still got the last of the brassicas, the winter brassicas, coming through. So we, I did clear this bed because obviously we've got the posh shed in now and we have put the undercoat on so far. Um, but I didn't want to take that one out because I hadn't yet created a broccoli. So that one, that one is creating a broccoli rather rather beauty sorry not a broccoli it's a violet cauliflower of course <laughs> all the same sort of brassica family and of course the one in here let me just show you and of course the one that is in the marquee also making a beautiful head so i'm glad that i left that in that won't be long before harvest but it's looking i mean look at that is that not just the most glorious thing Look at the, oh, the sun's coming out and glinting, glinting off those water drops. Now, if, anybody who knows me will know that I just love the water droplets on a brassica leaf, especially when it is, look at that. I mean, that, I'm going to have to do an Instagram picture, aren't I? Because that is stunning. Oh, okay. It is really muggy out there and it keeps raining. I've got quite a bit done, but not as much as I wanted to do. Of course, I never do, but I've got to uh, deal with all the chard and deal with all the leeks as well, process them and get them into the freezer. And I always find when I'm in the garden and I'm doing some harvesting, I need to allow time at the end to do that processing because otherwise I'm exhausted and I just want to sit down and actually I have to do that as well. It is really muggy and there is a thunderstorm warning a bit later on. So yeah, I've planted what I wanted, watered it in, although probably it'll rain, but if it doesn't then you know it could just pass over and we miss it. But anyway, <laughs> rabbiting on here. I've got to get on with this processing, so I'm gonna say goodbye and I will see you next time.
we've got a bit of rain. <laughs> I had to dash in. Yeah, enforced rain. But good for the garden. Definitely, no ceilings I just put in. We'll be loving this. Yay! Mm -hmm.